Welcome to another episode of Purchase Two Profits. I'm Seth Ferguson. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our interviews with successful real estate investors. Our guest today began investing in 2009. Her company has co-syndicated 11 multifamily properties valued at over $400 million. Julie Lamb is co-founder of Good Egg Investments, where she gives, uh, where she gives excellent advice. Julie, welcome to Purchase to Profits. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for having me, Seth. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, is it, so am I. So pardon the horrible pun. I just couldn't help myself. Oh, no, no worries. No worries. <laughs> we do so, that behind the scenes all the time. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so to, to get us started here, um, what are your real estate goals right now? So, um, you know, I think... Uh, gosh, there's a lot. There's so many. Um, we, my business partner and I just reviewed our goals at the end of last year. Um, we, as you mentioned, we co-syndicated about 11 deals last year. Nice. Um, and, uh, you know, I would say primarily our goal is to syndicate our own deal this year. Um, and to continue to co-syndicate with other folks. Um, but I think towards the middle end of this year, we'd like to do our own deal. Um, and so hopefully that, that happens and that pans out. But I would say that's kind of like the primary thing on my mind. Um, but secondary to that, I think uh, it's really about growing our brand. Um, you know, that's always been something that's been really important to us because I think um, at the heart of everything that we're doing, we really want to be able to reach as many people as we can. And so the more that we grow our brand, inevitably, the more people that will have an impact on um, and the more people will be able to reach. So I would say those are probably the two primary things. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, and if somebody's watching, they might not know what a co-syndication is. Uh, do you want to explain the difference? Oh, sure. Yeah. So basically a co-syndication is when you have a number of partners within a deal. And so the general partners, um, the folks who put a deal together. So a syndication has many different pieces, right? When you're uh, acquiring an apartment building, there's, uh, you know, folks who are doing the underwriting, folks who are doing the asset management, um, you know, the equity raising piece, the investor relations piece, the education piece, having the broker relationships. So when you co-syndicate a deal, there are different partners that ha uh, have the responsibility for various pieces of putting the entire deal together. And, and so for your goal for this year for doing your own syndication, so just for, if somebody doesn't understand, so you're going after a deal yourself, then you may bring on other co-syndicators to help you if that's needed? Correct. Yeah. I mean, ideally, we would like to take down the whole deal ourselves. Um, we, you know, I think a lot of people who are getting into multifamily syndication kind of go about it um, a different way than we do, which is they start off gathering their team, they start off, um, you know, making the broker relationships and putting deals together, and then they get a deal under contract and it's like, oh, I need five million dollars, right? Um, <laughs> oops. So, yeah, oops. Didn't, didn't really think that all the way through. What am I going to do? I'm under a time crunch. Um, and so we kind of did it backwards, and we started out uh, doing the investor relations piece and the equity raising first. Um, and so, like I said, now that we've done that for about 11 deals, we want to leverage that experience and take our investor base, which obviously has grown over the last year that we've been doing this, um, and take them with us into our own deal. So now, once we, you know, establish those broker relationships and we have that deal and we get it, you know, we submit our LOI, we get that deal under contract, now we can, you know, just put it out to our investors and hopefully be able to you know bring the money to the deal and not have to worry about that piece of it yeah and i think the, your approach is really good because now you have a track record of 11 deals you've participated in on the gp side right. so you're able yep. to go to investors now and say hey listen I, i've got this 11 deal track record i know what i'm doing Exactly. So that ex that's exactly why I started out this way is to be able to leverage the experience of the operators that I was partnering with. And so now I can take my investors and say, hey, we're going to basically duplicate everything that we've already done, except we're just going to do it in a new deal that may not involve those partners. And so, yeah. Yeah. So somebody may be, um, you know, interested in syndication and maybe wondering, you know, what benefit is there to having um, the, the, the main general partner bringing on co-syndicators? Is it just to raise capital or why would somebody want to partner with somebody else on the GP side? 
Um, I think there's a number of reasons. I mean, I think primarily the reason that you want to partner with someone is to leverage each other's experience and time, right? At the end of the day, um, you know, if you can do that, then you can take yourself from, you know, where you are today to where you're trying to go in a much shorter amount of time. And so yeah. I think that's really why someone would want to do that. That's why we wanted to do it. Um, you know, in order to be able to say that we have $400 million in our portfolio, I don't know that we would have been able to do that on our own in 12 months with no experience. Right. For um, sure. so at the end of the day, it's, I'm such a huge believer of leverage. Um, that's one of the reasons we're here. Uh, I think everybody knows that real estate is a huge leverage game. Um, and so, uh, you know, that continues on into the world of partnerships as well. So, yeah. yeah. So what kind of changes do you have to make in your business to go from that co-syndication kind of thing over to taking down your own deal? What? Yeah, yeah, a lot. Um, you know, right now, what I'm focused on is really building out those broker relationships, because that's something that we don't have right now. Mm -hmm. um, building out uh, relationships with KPs, anyone who might be interested in KPing the deal for us, uh, you know, finding the relationships with the lenders, that's another piece of it. Um, I live in San Francisco, uh, we invest in the Dallas area. Um, so a lot, you know, maybe it's finding a partner that's going to be our boots on the ground there. So uh, there's, you know, a lot of work that goes into um, syndicating your own deal, which is why I didn't start here. Um, but I think now with our track record and our experience, we're definitely um, more, you know, well positioned to, to do what we're trying to do this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and when you are in that co-syndicating position, are you, um, for your company, you were doing your investor relations, raising uh, some capital. Were you on the ground uh, doing inspections at the at the properties as well? No, um, we weren't doing necessarily doing inspections, but we were invited to the property. Anytime we have a new deal, we're always invited and welcome to anyone on the GP is welcome to come and tour the property and do your own, you know, sort of site visit, if you will. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's an inspection. Um, I definitely wouldn't say that I'm qualified to do any kind of like, you know, roof inspections or foundation inspections. But certainly, yes, absolutely. We have gone out to the properties um, and, and, you know, toured them along with everyone else in the GP. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking along the line of somebody, you know, getting into syndication and following your strategy of, of that leverage, um, you know, being able to participate in those site visits uh, would be a really yeah. good learning experience. Absolutely. I mean, not even just that, but the whole, um, you know, process of participating sort of on the behind the scenes side of everything really gives you a different perspective. Um, I started off on the limited partner passive side uh, and that was great too. You know, you yeah. from, you know, going, coming from never doing a deal at all in multifamily to doing a deal as a passive investor, you learn so much just by way of doing your due diligence and trying to understand, is this a safe investment for me to do? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's talk about that. What attracted you as an investor uh, to syndication and multifamily real estate? Yeah, so um, I think primarily really what it was was the ability to scale. Um, I was buying in 2016, I uh, sold my uh, one of our properties that we had bought here in the Bay Area and we were coming into some capital and I was trying to figure out what the best thing would be to do with that money. And I stumbled across a small website called Bigger Pockets. I don't know, you may have heard of it. Um, and I started uh, buying out of state. I started buying single family homes and smaller duplexes. And, you know, at two to five hundred dollars per door, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to take me forever, you know, to yeah. get to a point of financial independence, which was what I wanted. Um, and so I realized that if I wanted to really be able to leave my job, that I would have to scale and scale quickly. Right. And being, you know, doing one deal, one single family home by one single family home definitely was not going to get me there um, anytime soon. Uh, and so that was what initially attracted me. But as I mentioned earlier, there's so much to do. You know, when you think about acquiring a multifamily building, I initially was like, oh, yeah, I, I, this, is, this should be easy. I'll, I'll learn. I'll, you know, get a mentor and, 
and I'll take down my own apartment building. And I would say about a month or two into my mentorship program, I realized very quickly that I, this was not going to happen anytime <laughs> soon. Um, and so I, you know, thought to myself that investing as a passive would be the best and safest way um, for me to sort of learn the ropes. And so that's what I did. I invested as a passive first. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, what you just said is really important for somebody looking at real estate investing and having that end goal of, you know, that taking over their, their income. Um, because single family, it, like it, it's a grind acquiring property after property and, and the margins are so thin. Uh, yeah. but syndication really allows somebody to, to participate in a much larger deal, have that skill that you talked about and really leverage yeah. the strengths of everybody involved in that transaction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so let, let's talk about a deal that really stands out as a keystone deal for you. Um, like which, which one really stands out when you think back? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would have to say absolutely without a doubt, it was that first deal that I bought and it, you know, back then I didn't, it wasn't really a deal right in real yeah. estate terms that we, like we talk about now. Um, but I was just basically, it was 2009 and I was um, doing the traditional narrative of get married and buy a home. You know, I mean, I think that's how most people think about growing their wealth as buying a home. Right. Um, and so we were looking to do that and just so happened we were at, in the right place at the right time. I uh, didn't really know too much about real estate, um, but it was 2009 and uh, we started looking and nobody was buying and it was uh, a home that was 50% off of what it had been a year and a half before. And I thought this, this has got to be a deal. I don't know. I don't know much about real estate, but this has got to be a deal. Uh, and we I bought the town home and we ended up house hacking um, until we started having kids and we moved out. But I would say that was really sort of my eye opener to real estate and the possibility of um, of just how you can grow your wealth faster by doing something so simple as renting out the bedrooms within your room, which so many, obviously a lot of people do that now through Airbnb. Um, but this was 10 years ago. So that was kind of a, a new thing for us anyway. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the first deal that I did. We, um, at that time in 2009, there was the housing tax credit. I don't know if you remember that, but it was an $8,000 tax credit. Yeah. Um, and so we uh, bought the house for $320,000, I think, and we put down, I think, only $11,000. So it wasn't even a lot. Um, and then once we got that $8,000 tax credit, we were only into the deal for $3,000. On top of that, we were renting out the rooms. So now our mortgage is being paid down by someone else. <laughs> so we're $3,000 in and somebody else is paying down majority of our mortgage. So that was sort of the, the eye opener for me. And we started buying more properties between 2009 and 10. Um, yeah. So obviously that was a good time for us to get in. So, yeah, for, yeah, for sure. And, and then obviously that this, the scaling um, issue came up and then you hopped over to multifamily. Um, mm -hmm. How, how does if somebody might be wondering how somebody co-syndicating a deal um, actually earns any money? Do you want to explain how, how that's set up? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, essentially at the end of the day, what it is, is the general partnership takes a portion of uh, the earnings from the property, right? So if you take, you know, if you think about it as 100% earnings cash flow from the property, the general partnership earns 30% traditionally, not always, but traditionally, you usually see it between 20 to 30%. Um, and then that other 80 to 70% is what the limited partner passive investors take home. Um, but of that 30%, it's essentially split between all the different partners that are involved in the deal based on the value that they're able to bring to the table, right? So mm -hmm. if you've got an equity raiser, you've got an investor relations person, you've got the underwriter, you've got the asset manager, you've got, you know, all these various roles within the deal, they basically share that 30% pot of, of equity that's paid out to them from the cash flow on the property. Yeah. So, so you, you know, uh, doing the investor relations, raising some capital, um, do you, does the coast indicator participate in the cash flow or is it basically all loaded at the back end? Um, it's, it varies from deal to deal and sponsor to sponsor. Um, but I would say that the primary way that we earn our money is from the acquisition fees at closing. Um, so we share in that, uh, and then I would say in large part though, a lot of it comes from the equity on the back end, which yeah. 
as if I was a passive investor, um, that would, I would really like that setup. Right. Um, and that's, that's one of the things I did like as a passive was that a lot of the money wouldn't go to the general partnership until the end of the deal. Meaning that they have to meet their projections in order for them to get paid the majority of their money. And sure they're getting paid an acquisition fee for putting the deal together, but I liked that they were going to be incentivized to have to work as hard as and perform as best they could to ensure that they got their payout at the back end. So yeah. yeah. And, and that's a really good point because one of the key things you always look for is that alignment of interests. So right. it, it doesn't make sense for the general partner to get a payday if they're underperforming on the property and, and where it exactly. should be at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so getting involved in real estate, especially on the syndication side, co-syndicating, like how has that changed your life and your financial setup right now? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's changed my life. I've quit my job. Um, I, it's been, yeah, it's been almost a year. March 9th of 2018 was my last day. Um, I actually went to a, a real estate conference and met my business partner who I didn't know that we were going to partner up at the time, but she has two young kids and I have three young kids and she had just quit her job like a month prior to that conference. Um, and I was so inspired by her because she was a mom with young kids. And I said, you know what, if she can do this, I can do this too. And that Monday after the conference, I walked into my office and told them I was leaving. Um, but it, yeah. <laughs> So it, um, you know, it absolutely has just changed the trajectory of my life, my time with my family. Um, I last summer, well, after I put in my notice, I decided I was going to take my family to Hawaii for a month over the summer because I didn't have to work anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I booked my tickets and found a place and we spent a month in Hawaii together with my kids. They got to swim in the pool every day. Um, and we got to do so much fun stuff. And now this is my daily. I get to do stuff like this and share my knowledge and my experience with great people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's changed my life very dramatically. Yeah, oh, for, for sure. Uh, are you going back to, back to Hawaii anytime soon? I actually am. I'm oh, going nice. back again this summer. <laughs> and instead of one month, we're going for two this summer. So we're, <laughs> we're just going to, you know, one month just wasn't enough. So we're going to make it two months this summer. So oh, yeah, that, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, yeah. well, what's your goal for, uh, for getting your first, uh, you know, full syndication uh, this year? What's your deadline? Yeah. Yeah, um, so we had projected that by the fall, by fall or end of the year, we would have something closed and, and or under contract. Um, and so I'm really working on putting those pieces together right now. So building out those broker relationships and, you know, talking, having those conversations with KPs and, you know, trying to put all of that in, you know, in place so that we can start putting in offers and then hopefully get something under contract by the fall. Yeah. That sounds really exciting. I'm really excited for you. Thank you. I'm, I, we're excited too. Fingers crossed. We'll, we'll see what happens. So. Oh, well, we'll have to have you back on once you've uh, taken down the deal and uh, yeah, to no, have you give us the details. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Yeah. So Julie, if somebody wants to get in touch with you and learn some more about what you're doing, uh, where can they find you? Uh, so our website is goodegginvestments.com and my email is julie at goodegginvestments.com. That's great. Well, Julie, just want to say thanks so much for uh, sharing your real estate success with us today. Thanks so much for having me, Seth. Yeah, you're very welcome. And to you, our viewers, I wish you well in your journey from purchase to profits. See you next time.